Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Mark Anthony's Music Fix. I decided to start this channel. It's It's been a work in progress mentally over the last few months of coming to the decision of starting a YouTube channel, putting my face out there, getting over a little bit of camera shyness. Uh, it all started when I was when I began receiving Discogs messages on a regular basis, very positive feedback from people that I've never met in, in the collecting community that say that, oh, I, I stumbled onto your reviews, I find them really helpful. I like to follow uh, you know the people that you're picking and the artists because I feel like you're making great recommendations. So I thought, why not take this off of the page and make it a little bit more 3D and interactive? Um, also, simultaneously, uh, I've started a new, a new job recently that requires public speaking, and I feel like the need to improve my ability to uh, speak off the cuff and, you know, be able to work in front of groups could also be improved by, uh, you know, attacking this channel. So it's like these two forces are converging in my life to to bring me to this point right now. So without further ado, I would like to start reviewing some records for you guys. Okay. The first title that I want to talk about is this Octal Industries album. This, in my opinion, is the techno album of 2019. This came out in December, right before the end of the year. As you can see from the cover, it looks like, just based on the art, that it's going to be dub tech. And there are some touches of dub techno in this, but I think overall this is a very holistic techno album from start to finish. It starts out kind of slow on the A and B side, and then by the time you get to side C and D, it's just absolute murder. Uh, there's a couple of tracks that I know that I would I would love to play these out to people in an opening set. I just they're slow, they're methodic, and they just effing crush it. So I want to give props to Octal Industries for making a techno album. I think making a techno album is very hard. I see so many techno albums come out where it's like, oh, there's two good tracks on it and there's 10 that, you know, I, I really could do without, you know. So a lot of times when you're buying a techno album, it doesn't feel like you're getting a, a lot of bang for your buck. Like it could be 27 plus shipping. This is not the case with this Octal album. Uh, this guy was in the zone for every freaking track and uh, I also want to give a shout out to the label that it's on, Verdant Recordings, who is, that's run by uh, Discogs user Genre, who's been around forever. I looked it up and he's been on Discogs since 2002. I mean, one of like the real OGs uh, decided to kick off his own label, started curating it, picking out new music that he likes, and he's putting out you know albums with this beautiful artwork. And if I had to ascribe a theme to to what I've seen from his the music that he's picking it's almost like that silent season label meets del scene where it's like this future deep techno that doesn't really fit a label and to top it off he's got beautiful artwork on every release so hat tip to you andy i think what you're doing is beautiful and you're living out one of my personal dreams that if i could i certainly would do what you're doing props to you sir next release i want to talk about is transwax 7 I have to say guys, I absolutely love this series. I think the idea behind it is beautiful. Uh, the producer is Ijeka, if I'm saying that correctly. I never know how to say the producer's names because I only see it in print ever. Uh, two classic remakes on here. On the A side is the, the classic 90s, uh, Big Beat, Corona, Rhythm of the Night. Everybody knows the vocal and I really think you can't go wrong with a remix like that as long as you leave it like somewhat relatively intact. Um, I think that that is good. And also on the B side, there's the Sarah McLaughlin Silence remix. Now, I was a classic trancer back in the day. So the Airscape remix, the Tiesto Search of Sunrise remix, I understand that they can't be effed with. That being said, I think this turned out really nice. And I love that Transwax is going back and revisiting these old classics that everybody grew up on. It just feels like... Um, so much fun when I listen to them. I have all seven in the series at this point. Uh, it's turned into a rabid fervor, I guess would be the term for it, trying to even get these on release day. When seven came out, I, I overslept that day because I was overseas, so I didn't get the notification until three o'clock in the afternoon US time, and, and they were all gone. But uh, thankfully, before I left for my trip, I had uh, pre-ordered one, but um, 
I, that series is getting a ton of attention and I feel like it's worth it. I also saw some comments on Discogs of people, um, I also saw this on Facebook where somebody was mentioning that the vocal that was used might not be the original. That might be the case. You can tell that um, it, it sounds like it's a very close cover to the original, but not the original. But honestly, who cares? You know, if, if people weren't making these, there would be nothing. So I appreciate any attempt um, to revive a classic and put a fresh spin on it, which I think Transwax, Transwax executes perfectly. So bravo. Last release I want to talk about today is from the past. This is a 2013 balance release. Danny Howells, balance number 24. So my story behind this is, is unique, I guess, or interesting. When this came out, I was actually at a very difficult point in my life. I had had a very uh, almost like tragic relationship in uh, late 2013 that put me in a really bad spot mentally. When this came out, I was already Danny Howe's super fan number one. Um, ever since the Essential Mix that he put out in 2007, which completely blew my mind, I, I've listened to, to, to that Essential Mix more times than anything else probably combined in my life. Um, so the way that he, that he put that essential mix together, um, he had samples, snippets, uh, vocal components, uh, long, deep mixes where, you know, unless you obsessed over the mix, you couldn't even tell where one track ended and, and the next began. Uh, I just got hooked on Howls after that. Fast forward to 2013, this mix comes out and, you know, I'm mentally and psychologically in the gutter. Um, it didn't, I have to be honest, it didn't hit me the way that I, I hoped it would. It, I don't think I was in the right place to, to receive that mix. So it sat in my car for a couple of weeks. I gave it a couple of spins. It, you know, it didn't really click. And I remember just putting it in my cabinet and it sat there for years and years. It wasn't until recently that I was going through just um, cleaning out my, my inventory, seeing if there was anything I could sell and get a few bucks back on that I found it. I was like, maybe I should give this a shot again. So I started listening to it again recently, and it's like, the guy just has this way of picking these eclectic tracks that, like, they're not obvious. They're good, and they're they're classy, but you don't notice them right away. It's like, um, you know, walking down the street, and you, and you see a beautiful girl, but she's not, she's not beautiful, like, in a very, like, overt way. It's like, you have to look at her for a little bit. And then like, you, you start to see, you're like, oh, there's, there's something about that. Like, I don't know what that is, but that's how I feel about his, his music. He, he just picks these, these less obvious tracks. He's never in your face or over the top with anything. He just brings like consistent, deep, like thoughtful music. And it's just in, in that mix, it's nonstop. I mean, you can't really pick a fault in that um, it's not high energy. It's not like a club banger. It's more like you're just going to drive down the highway and just uh, let it happen. Uh, so uh, props to you, Danny. Thanks for uh, putting out these wonderful mixes. And, um, you know, I, I don't come out to your gigs as much as I would like to, but hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. And thanks again for all your contributions.